using by advantages, or CBA, is a best known practice in the lean construction community for making good, durable decisions. Over the next few minutes, we will look at how CBA works and demonstrate how you really can compare apples, oranges, and even bananas in making decisions. So why is having the right decision-making process important? Because we have to live with the decisions long after we make them. How a decision is made, more often than not, has a significant impact on the actual outcome. So using a sound process is essential to achieving sound results. Decision making is more than just selecting the best deal. Using personal decisions as an example, some will buy a handbag, a watch, or shoes that cost five times more than another, or 50 times more over a simple solution that will function just fine. Others buy a car that may cost as much as a house in some locations over basic transportation. Why? Because we make decisions based on real or perceived differences or advantages of one alternative over another. If decisions were made solely on price, we would all be driving Yugos and wearing Casio watches. Before we get into the mechanics of CBA, we need to look at some common ways decisions are often made. Sometimes we simply go with our gut based on past decisions. For example, whenever you hear, we've always hired supplier X for our big jobs, or we've always done things this way, you know the basis is past experience. Even if supplier X's performance or your past ways of doing things are only marginally acceptable. It's the better the devil we know than the devil we don't know mentality. It would take a really negative experience with supplier X or in the current way we are doing things to make a change using this approach. In team settings, decisions are likely to be influenced by arguments that only a few members provide or by those who take the strongest position. So why do so many decisions get made in these ways? Because it's easy. Relying on intuition and past decisions doesn't take much work. And not surprisingly, the results show. And researchers in the area of decision making explain why. They have broken down the way the brain processes information to make decisions into two modes or systems of thinking. System one is intuitive. This system resides in the limbic part of the brain where value judgments are made based on past agreeable or disagreeable experiences, often unconsciously. It is where the from the gut decision making takes place. It is also where the fight or flight instinct resides. System one operates automatically and quickly with little or no effort and no sense of voluntary control. For example, we react to faces that we perceive as angry faster than to happy faces because they contain a greater possibility of danger. Again, fight or flight. System two is logical. This system resides in the neocortex part of the brain where human language, abstract thought, imagination, and consciousness takes place. This is also where deep thought and analysis operates. System two allocates attention to the effortful mental activities that demand it, including complex computations. In other words, good decision making is hard work. Researchers point out that the problem with many important decisions is that they are made using the wrong system in our brains. In our high pressure environments, we tend to function in system one decision making when mental energy is near exhaustion. One of the benefits of the CBA process is to provide a safe framework for good rational judgment by moving decision making out from system one and into system two. Decision making in CBA focuses stakeholders on the importance and differentiation of each alternative's advantages. Also, CBA provides a streamlined, systematic, and repeatable system for making and documenting decisions. The reason why it is a lean method is because decisions that are durable do not have to be reworked, which saves time and money in the long run. So let's get started on the CBA steps. The first step is to identify alternatives. Alternatives are people, things, or plans from which one option is to be chosen. For our CBA example, we will use an apple, an orange, and a banana as alternatives for a post-workout snack. Step two is to identify the factors we will use to differentiate the alternatives. A factor is an element or part of a decision containing criteria required for making a decision. 
Usually, there are many factors to consider from which only the ones with differences will be selected by stakeholders. Inevitably, someone will ask, which factor is most important? My answer? You're asking the wrong question. Why? Because CBA does not directly compare or rank the importance of the factors themselves against one another. What we are doing with CBA is comparing advantages within the factors. Let's use safety as an example. Everyone tends to agree that safety is of the highest importance. However, in many cases, the difference between three suppliers' safety records may differ only slightly with no real apparent advantage of one over the other. All the firms may meet or exceed our minimum requirements. Therefore, since the level of differentiation is small to almost nil, a good case can be made that safety is only the table stakes for the suppliers to get in the game. And after that, safety is not a factor in the CBA for final supplier selection. Note, it is for that very reason the benefit of a good pre-qualification effort, which includes reviewing safety records, is to weed out those firms that do not meet our requirements before conducting the CBA. In contrast, lean project delivery experience as a factor may not rank as high in absolute importance. However, the advantage of one firm compared to the others is significant. It is this level of differentiation, not the level of absolute importance, that would make lean one of the factors to be considered in the CBA for final supplier selection. Again, the factors we are looking to use in the CBA are the ones where an advantage exists between alternatives. For our exercise, we will use diet goal, flavor, nutrition, and convenience as factors. In practice, the selection of factors will require significant discussion among stakeholders as part of the process. Now someone is bound to ask, so what about cost? Why isn't that one of the factors? Great question. In CBA, cost is not ignored. However, it is considered in the last step of the CBA process, so hold tight until then. Now that the number of factors are known, it is time to construct a table using the CBA tabular format. Our alternatives are entered at the top. For our example, we have apple, orange, and banana. Factors are then entered down the left side. At this point, we'll start asking questions such as, what is it that makes an apple different from an orange in the diet goal? Or, what is it that makes an orange different from a banana for convenience? So the next step is to define the criteria for each factor that will answer those questions. First, a couple of definitions. Criteria is must or want conditions of a factor. An attribute is the character, quantity, or quality of one alternative. The key word is one. So for the diet goal factor, we will say it's calories. For nutrition, we'll use milligrams of vitamin C. And for convenience, we will use minutes to prepare for eating. For flavor, it is a little more subjective, so we will use taste. I will explain later how we will use taste as a differentiator since it is not that easy to quantify. Now we list the attributes under each factor with the criteria that it supports. Next, we identify the attributes of each alternative for the factors criterion. An apple has 52 calories as an attribute for diet goal. An orange has 86 calories and the banana is 94 calories. We repeat for nutrition in milligrams vitamin C and then for convenience in minutes. For flavor, it is more subjective based on the preference of the stakeholder. So a descriptor is listed on which to differentiate the fruit. After filling in the data, the next thing to do is underline the least preferred attribute in the factor. For the diet goal, the highest calories is least preferred. And we do the same for the rest of the factors. Now we start looking at the advantages within each factor. In CBA, an advantage is a beneficial difference between attributes of two alternatives. Why are pros and cons type language not used? Well, it may seem to be a slight nuance, but a disadvantage of one alternative is really an advantage of another alternative. The point is to keep the language we use in CBA consistent. Back to our example. The orange has an 8 calorie advantage over the banana, and the apple has a 42 calorie advantage over the banana. In the nutrition factor, the banana and the orange have a 2 milligram and a 72 milligram advantage respectively over the apple. 
In the convenience factor, the banana and the apple have a two minute and a three minute advantage respectively over the orange. For the flavor factor, it is a little trickier. When the advantage between alternatives is subjective, we need to use the comparative terms such as more than the least preferred, much more, and most, where most equals the greatest advantage in that factor. For our example, the taste of the orange is more preferred over the least preferred taste of the apple, and the banana has the most preferred taste. Next, we circle the greatest advantage in each factor. Having identified the most important advantages for each factor, we will identify the paramount advantage between all the circled advantages among all the factors. The paramount advantage will be given 100 points and will be the anchor point all advantages will be weighed against. For our example, the banana's most preferred advantage in flavor was selected as the paramount advantage and given 100 points. All the rest of the advantages are compared against the paramount advantage. This is the anchoring relationship among all the advantages. Now we will score the other circled advantages. The key is to assess the importance of the advantage, not of the importance of the factor itself. So now we need to ask ourselves the questions. Which is more important in this decision? The apple's calorie advantage or the orange's nutritional advantage? The apple's calorie advantage or the apple's convenience advantage? And so forth. For our example, in relation to the banana's most preferred advantage in the flavor factor, the nutrition advantage of the orange we score as an 85. The apple's convenience factor advantage is scored as 70. And the apple's diet goal advantage is given a score of 35. Next, we decide the importance of the remaining advantages, the ones that have not been underlined or circled. In this step, we continue to ask the questions, which is more important in this decision? The advantage of more preferred tastes of the orange or 72 milligrams of vitamin C of the orange? The advantage of two minutes saved peeling of the banana or eight fewer calories of the orange? We keep asking these comparative questions until we have scored every advantage. The underlined attribute is given a score of zero since there is no advantage for that alternative in that factor. We'll leave it blank for simplicity. So these are the assessed scores for sake of time. Because scoring reveals the preferences of stakeholders, not just the numbers, good judgment and open dialogue is essential. Now it is time to add up the scores. In our example, the orange came out with the highest score of 160, the banana second at 135, and the apple last at 105. To quickly illustrate what we have done so far, we have identified and scored the advantages for the alternatives. Then we added up the advantages like this. The question often comes up, what about our typical system where we build tables to weight, rate, and calculate. Doesn't this do the same thing as CBA? The answer is, sort of. Let me explain with an example, albeit sanitized, from one of our projects. Of the 24 metrics listed, only 11 of them have more than a one point difference. The other 13 dilute the level of differentiation of advantages. Several of the metrics are table stakes and should have only been used as part of the pre-qualification effort. It could be easily argued, concerning cost as a factor, that it would be difficult to establish an advantage since one firm may not have fully understood the job and therefore underestimated, or the other firm staffed the team with junior people to get lower unit rates. The other shortcoming of this approach is that we could lose the history of why something was given an 8 or a 9 unless documented somewhere else. We also lose the learning that could be applied to future decisions. Back to the CBA process. It is time to reflect and reconsider the scoring, especially when the total scores are so close that you may need to sleep on it. Then after reflecting, make any necessary changes. In our example, no adjustments were required, so the orange remained with the highest score. And if money is not an issue, then you would end the CBA session here and select the alternative with the highest score, which in this case is the orange. But let's continue the CBA with the consideration of handling cost as part of the process. This is the step where we said we would deal with the issue of money. In our example, the banana cost 25 cents, the orange costs 30 cents, and the apple costs 50 cents. So in this case, we decide the 25 points of advantage of the orange over the banana is worth the extra five cents and therefore supports our decision to buy the orange. However, if the costs were different so that the orange cost 50 cents and the banana cost 25 cents, 
you may very well decide that the 25 point advantage the orange has over the banana is not worth double the cost. In fact, you may decide that buying the banana and the advantage gained from spending the extra 25 cents on something else would raise the cumulative advantage score of the banana over the 160 score of the orange. So then you would buy the banana and use the 25 cents on something else to increase the overall advantage of that decision. This is an example of the law of decreasing returns for money spent. In real life, there will be times when the alternative with the highest score may not be selected because the money differential from the second alternative could be applied elsewhere on a project to pay for more importance on another decision or to buy more scope that adds to the overall cumulative advantage. CBA decisions are not made in a vacuum, especially when money is constrained. To understand the handling of costs in much more detail than what we've looked at over the last few minutes, I recommend you take the one-day CBA course. Also keep in mind that decisions are often situational. For example, what would you rather have, a pound of gold or a gallon of water? Careful on your choice. If you were in the middle of the mall, no question the gold would be the decision. You could walk down to the jewelry store or coin shop and cash in. But if you were in the middle of the desert and had gone three days without a drink, your decision would most likely be different. A correct decision is always to be based on the occasion. This also means that the decision-making process, though informed by past CBAs, must be repeated for each scenario. Here is an example of an actual CBA for an air handler selection for a mechanical space application where the scenario did matter. Typically, the company's standard call for a high-end unit regardless of the application. However, the team questioned whether this was the best use of project money. So we did a CBA work session. When all was said and done, based on the scenario for a mechanical space application, not for a manufacturing space as was the intent of the standard, the low end unit was selected. However, the reason for the decision was not lowest cost, but energy efficiency, which was the paramount advantage for this scenario. All the other factors that typically get brought up as reasons for buying the high end unit turned out not to be as much of a cumulative advantage as some would have thought. Therefore, this CBA was helpful to the team of engineers to get unstuck from doing what had always been done so they could make a best value decision which saved $11,000 for this particular project. And it also gave them the assurance that a precedent would not be set for a clean space scenario since it was understood that a new CBA would be conducted the next time an air handler selection decision rolled around. By now you've probably got the idea that CBA, once understood, is easy to do and can be used on simple and complex decisions alike. Now the only thing left to do is practice. Next time you have an impactful decision to make, have someone who has been trained in CBA facilitate a session to reinforce what you've just learned. To become more proficient yourself, enroll in the one day Choosing by Advantages course to understand in more detail the principles touched on in this video. As many in the construction industry have already discovered, to make sound, durable decisions, CBA is the recommended method of choice.